So, now how long have you been? You've been uh, CEO now for a year and a half? Year? Uh, five quarters, but who's counting? No. Uh, <laughs> quarter I mean, by quarter by quarter. Right. Like, you, um, well, you made a, an announcement that uh, uh, certainly the world took notice of. I mean, you, know, you had your developer conference a week and a half ago now, mm -hmm. um, and you had a ton of announcements uh, around your platform technologies, and we'll get into that in a minute. But I think the one that got a lot of people buzzing because it felt possibly initially like a head scratcher um, is your acquisition, or I suppose pending acquisition, of Omniture, um, a web analytics company with uh, hundreds of clients uh, in the you know, corporate clients, uh, generally seen as a marketing company or a marketing you know, analysis company. Um, so let me ask you, why? Why did you buy Omniture? Well, you know, we, we certainly think that it was a no-brainer for us. Um, as a number of you know, Adobe's always been in the business of helping uh, create content. And we think that there are two fundamental transformations that are happening in the industry. Uh, people are moving from just creating content to creating content and applications. And the other fundamental transformation that's happening is it's not just about the creation of the content, it's about the creation and optimization of that entire content. And so we think Adobe is in a really unique position to be able to offer any media creator anywhere in the world the ability to create content for all devices, but even more importantly now, to close the loop and to be able to optimize that content. And by that you mean understand how, the consume, how that content is consumed and create a feedback loop so that you can iterate on that content or make different forms of it or make better content or, I mean, so is, how do you get paid in all of that? Well, maybe uh, it's always useful to give a couple of customer examples. Let's take a customer like Nike that's created this incredibly immersive experience on the web. Uh, a lot of that experience has been created in Flash and the holy grail for them is to really understand how the customer is using that website. You know, what, how do they navigate it? When do they do commerce? And we now have the ability to really tie together everything we do on the creative suite on the application front and provide them information in real-time analytics, much like you were showing uh, about you know, the attendees of this particular event. And you know, the way we charge for it is we've always charged for the world's best tools. And increasingly, we've been moving to where we offer services. And this allows us to offer new services built on either the Flash platform or HTML. Do you see uh, potentially building out the business in other ways? And, and, and there's two that, that come to mind, and not that I'm suggesting them, uh, or you need advice. Um, but uh, one of them would be that perhaps, you know, there's been a lot of concern. I think it was one of the main themes of last year's conference when we were talking about the advertising and marketing world, that it is increasingly difficult to measure reliably the web. That um, it, you know, our, current, Zuntite, our current status quo, um, you know, which is page views and um, uh, impressions, uh, uniques, um, is increasingly not a great way of measuring when we have flash-based web and, you know, Ajax and so on that, that is a different, could you see yourself taking Omniture plus flash and, and, and competing in terms of measuring the whole web and providing a service like that? Well, the vision that we really have is to be able to offer any of our customers, whether they be a marketing organization or a media house trying to create content, information about who's using it. How relevant is that information? How targeted it is? So if you take a customer like Hulu, for example, and they have all this video, if we can now provide them information about who's accessing that video, how long did they stay on that video, which ad might they click, we think we provide a pretty unique service. One of the amazing statistics about Flash is that when we introduce a new version of Flash, uh, approximately 90% of the web moves over in one year to use that version of Flash. And when you say 90% of the web, can you put an actual number to that? It's hundreds of millions of people. We, we download something like eight or 10 million copies of Flash uh, a day. And that's just not on PC devices today. Increasingly, we all know that the next realm is mobile. 
Um, it's in the living room uh, with a lean back experience also on the internet, on IP connected TVs. And Flash is now on all of those devices. And so I think the opportunity for us is to offer the customers like Nike or like Disney more information. Adobe will never be in the business of providing those ads or being in the portal business. But well, that was the next business model I wanted to ask you about. There was uh, plenty of speculation upon news breaking that you were acquiring Omniture that your goal was to do what Yahoo, Microsoft, AOL, and Google have done, which is to be in the advertising network business of some sort or another. And I think people saw this in, you know, 800 million installs of Flash as a potential jumping, plus all that data of engagement as a potential jumping off point to creating a pretty powerful data-driven advertising network or network exchange. And that's, you're staying, not going to be your business. No, our business is uh, first and foremost to provide this incredibly rich environment on hopefully every device that's connected to the internet through Flash. And we've done, I think, a great job of that. Flash has created markets, whether it's the video that we see on the web with 70% of the video, or casual gaming and how people are now creating games in Flash, rich internet applications, which everybody is talking about. And our business model is about making sure that we have that reliable environment across multiple operating systems, multiple devices, and we monetize it through our tools, and we will monetize it through these services that we offer. I think one of the things that people were a bit concerned about was if you've got, you know, flash on everybody's computer, now you've got an analytics and tracking uh, uh, company that you're going to sort of bolt into flash in a way that allows you to understand how that content's being used, that there are significant potential privacy concerns and you become, uh, you know, as much of a target uh, and invested with as much trust as a company like Google. Can you respond to that? You raise a really important uh, point here, John, and you know, making sure that we maintain the trust of customers is something that's very, very important to us at, at Adobe. Uh, in terms of our vision, we're trying to make sure that people who have this great content and people who want to enable e-commerce on the internet have the tools to do that. But we've always been very particular about making sure that we don't send any information unless the customers allow us to do that. And so, you know, it's a clear balance that we have to maintain. It's one that we've done uh, for the 25 plus years we've been in existence with all of our open technologies, and it's something that we will continue to maintain. Now, your Flash platform, uh, it strikes me, you know, has a really significant competitor who is uh, a distant number two, um, especially when it comes to video. Um, and they don't like being number two. Um, it's, their name is Microsoft. Um, what do you make of competing directly with them? Well, you know, when you create these large, immense markets, uh, and you know, with the video industry, we can create a media broadcast network with a number of our partners, it certainly attracts competitors. And we recognize that. Uh, I think Flash has some really unique advantages today. You know, the fact that uh, we have the adoption rate that we have uh, with Flash. Cross-platform. Cross-platform has always been in the DNA of this company, whether it was with PostScript, whether it was with PDF, and now certainly with Flash. And that's something that's very critical to us. Our franchise of the people who use our tools to create all of this video, that's certainly something that's important. But, you know, the world is moving towards being able to consume this content online, and all of this premium content, money will be made. And as long as we enable our customers to do that, I think we're going to be in great shape. My son, who's a freshman in college right now, he's going to be watching all of this video, whether it's the Major League Baseball playoffs or whether it's the U2 concert that's going to be broadcast in Flash, and he's willing to pay for it. Maybe because he's using my credit card, but you know, uh, he's 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 willing to pay for it, and that's where the world's headed. And I think we're enabling that. Um, do, but do you worry about the competition from Microsoft in particular? You know, they they seem willing to do whatever it takes to get. I mean, they're they're not they're not joking around when it comes to Silverlight and their goals. With I think they do view you and Adobe as a significant competitor as a platform level player uh, to web content delivery and creation. 
you know, if we lie, lie down, play dead, we will certainly lose this market and we will cede it. But that's not what Adobe has ever been about. Uh, when you think about what we've done over the last year with Flash, we've added the ability to do high definition, and you see that on sites like Hulu or Ipex or, or Google with YouTube. We've added the ability to make sure that the same video source can be transcoded onto a PC as well as a mobile device. We've added the content protection capability that a number of our media partners want us to do. We've added more capability in our authoring tools. So if we stand still, we're going to lose, but we're not going to stand still. Talk to me about the announcements that you've made recently. Um, they seem to be very consistent with the themes of this conference uh, around mobility mm -hmm. and um, uh, sort of a, you know, a, ne a next level uh, of, of device use. So, so in case folks haven't read the news, why don't you tell us sure, what, what you sure. announced? Yeah, I was talking to Tim earlier this morning, and I said, you know, there are going to be a billion people plus in India and China, and they're all going to access the internet, but they're not going to access it on a PC. They're going to access it on a mobile device or some other device. And so a year ago, we announced the Open Screen Project, which was a new initiative to get Flash out on every single device. Uh, that had a screen on it. And we changed the business model. Adobe used to charge a royalty for it. Uh, we said we're not going to charge a royalty for it. And we're going to work with an entire ecosystem of partners to have them deliver Flash, the same Flash that you saw on a PC on all of these mobile devices. And so we've had a number of partners sign up to the Open Screen Project. Google signed up, RIM signed up, Docomo signed up, Motorola, Samsung. Uh, Broadcom, NVIDIA, and the goal really is to work with this entire ecosystem to get Flash in all its richness on all of these devices. Very, very exciting. Not on the uh, Windows Mobile platform. It is on Windows Mobile. It's on Nokia. Uh, you know, 19 out of the top 20 partners have signed up Through for it. Through partnerships, though. Microsoft's not a partner in the open screen, are they? Uh, Microsoft is already shipping uh, Flash, actually, on Windows Mobile. Great. Right. Well, there you go. Maybe they'll and just I think, give up. No, I think Microsoft sees it uh, in the lens of their customers, which is they recognize that Flash is very synonymous with the content on the web, and in order to enable their customers to have the experience that they want. And that's an interesting part, I think, of Web 2.0. We are in an era where we partner with a lot of these companies, and we compete with them. Right. It's just a reality. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm curious what you make because we just saw it this morning. What do you make of, um, of Google's move to Chrome OS? We are working very closely. I, I understand Sundar was here earlier today, and we are working with them uh, on both Chrome as well as Android. We've already demonstrated you know, Flash on Android devices. And uh, Sundar would say that clearly Flash is an integral part of the web. And we shared the vision of the web being the operating system of the future. So we are actually very aligned on that. And um, talk to me a bit about the, the iPhone as a, as a platform. That's, uh, you announced that a flash. Tell me what you announced with regards to the iPhone. Well, what we announced were a couple of things. Uh, we first announced that you could now take Adobe's authoring applications and you could actually compile down those applications to be able to run on the iPhone. And we had a number of applications that have already been accepted uh, by Apple that are already on the store. So as you know, Apple doesn't want interpreted code on the iPhone. But this allows people to take Flash content, compile it down for the iPhone or any other, other mobile devices, and have those applications run. So the holy grail of being able to author once and play back everywhere. We also announced recently Photoshop.com for iPhone. It's, I think, the number yeah. one uh, app, a free app downloaded, and it's you know, got some great reviews. What we don't have yet, clearly, is the ability for us to run Flash in the browser. And I think the iPhone's a great device. We'd love to work with Apple to make it happen. Why, why do you think they're not letting you do that? I think that's a better question for Steve. <laughs> but he's not here, and you are. <laughs> I know you have an answer to that question, um, but I, I'm sure you don't want to give it to me. Um, let me ask you about the publishing industry. So we had some pretty robust conversations yesterday. It's clear there are a few tender nerves um, in, in the publishing industry right now because they're, they're getting beat up in the press, <laughs> those publishers are. Um, and I'm curious, as a company that has been synonymous 
with publishing. And my, I started my career in 1986 um, as a desktop publishing guy. It's my first job was doing desktop publishing um, using Adobe products. Um, and, and honestly, I think, and I don't know if this is true for the whole group here, but I think a lot of people still, when they think of Adobe, they think of, they think of Photoshop, they think of Illustrator, you know. Um, what are the roles of those tools, which are sort of, sort of well, well loved and ingrained in, in a lot of people's minds, um, as we move to, you know, a world of sort of publishing across the web and independent of, you know, the output on paper? Well, first, I, print isn't dead by any uh, stretch of the imagination. And actually, if you think about it globally, uh, the amount of newspapers and magazines are actually increasing. Um, I think the business models are transforming. There's no question about that, and it's moving online. And there is no doubt in my mind that premium content online is going to make money. And so it's a question about how we all transform ourselves to providing the content that's relevant and targeted to information. I think what's going to change is you can't have content that's not personalized or not targeted. And so what we have been really hard at work is to make sure that our tools, all the tools that you talk about, allow people to use content that's been created for print and repurpose it for the web, for mobile devices, uh, as well as increasingly richer forms like video. Um, I'm curious where things might go. One of the, uh, we ran a little contest before uh, this event and folks tweeted questions uh, for various people and you got a bunch of questions and I got to pick one of them to ask you because I think it indicates a larger potential trend and, and he may have his facts wrong and I, I found it hard to fact check so you tell me but okay. here's the question from Evan Wolf. Why did you quietly add a VoIP stack to Flash? Will this help Flash developers build their own Skypes? I think it points to a bigger idea which is you've got Flash as a platform across mi hundreds of millions of computers, there's a lot that you might start to stack up in terms of creating, uh, you know, a significant platform for um, for the web. When we talk, think about tectonic shifts that are happening in the software industry, certainly the move towards the cloud is one. We see this move towards devices, and the third one that I talk about is the move towards social computing. And in that context, what we want to make sure is that anybody who uses Flash uh, can build fundamentally collaborative applications uh, using the technologies that we have. Um, we also actually do have a web conferencing product ourselves uh, called um, Connect, which I think is a great product. But the reality is that we've taken that technology and now made it available as a service. So anybody who wants to create a collaborative application with voice, think about a customer support application on the web where people want to click on a button and have a dialogue directly with the customer service representative. Well, those, such, those kinds of things exist, right? But they're hard to scale at the current. Well, you know, the beauty about Flash, again, is by virtue of it being on every single device and uh, it being delivered as a service, we actually think it will scale. It will scale to allow fundamentally new collaborative applications uh, created using this technology. Another thing that was discussed but on day one, we had Brian Roberts here, um, and he showed the results and sort of an early beta of something he's rolling out called on, online on demand, um, where, you know, what I found very interesting about it was that the interface that he had uh, through the web of, you know, sort of fan cast with connected to, you know, if you're a cable subscriber now, you can see all your shows on the web. Right. That interface was so much more fluid than the interface that we get to see when we use the cable box, right? And people liked, in the audience, liked that web interface much better. And then he said something which I just hope happens, but clearly hasn't yet, which is that we're going to be able to take that web-based video experience and push it over to our television screen. Um, how does Adobe help make that happen? Well, we work very closely with Comcast as well. And uh, you know, in terms of that user experience, two things. Uh, first, you're right. People are not going to put up with experiences today, whether it's be on the web or on a TV at home, that is not this visually compelling, engaging experience. 
And our goal, secondly, is to make sure that if people create that experience, that they can actually have that entire experience work across all of these devices. So we are working with uh, Sri, who's their CTO, and the goal is you create that application experience in Flash, and you should be able to therefore transport it from a PC to an IP-connected TV. It's, a, it's an exciting vision. Um, you have a deal with Twitter? <laughs> no, if you I want to announce that. it, you can do it now. <laughs> so I just had to throw that out there. There have been some great a, social applications, though, that have been built <laughs> using Air, right? Yeah, I mean, TweetDeck. Yeah, you look yeah. at TweetDeck, and that's a great example right. of an application uh, that allows the social networking that Twitter does so well, right. but using uh, Air and Flash technology. Right, right. Um, guys, if you have questions, um, please come up. Mic here and a mic there. Oh, we have a question over here. Hi, Jason Martell from Trapster.com. Um, very excited to see in CS5, as you pointed out, some of these new social features porting over to the mobile devices. Could you just speak to the role that Flash Media Server will play in being able to also do real-time experiences on the mobile and how that will compete to some of the sources doing peer-to-peer -peer through sure. the Flash player? Sure. So the question was around Flash Media Server. And for those who don't know, today Flash uh, is offered as video in two ways. The first is you can do what's called uh, progressive download, and the second is you can stream this Flash video. And Adobe offers a server that allows you to take the Flash client and stream video down to it, and that's what a number of our media partners do. Our goal has been to continuously open a Flash media server, so the protocol is now open. We've also announced a new uh, framework. It's called the Open Source Media Framework that allows anybody to use the Flash client and build an equivalent Flash media server. We're very big on open standards. But our goal, certainly, with the Flash media server moving forward is to do a couple of things. First, we've offered content protection now, which is certainly important to a number of our media companies. The second is we can transcode data directly on the fly. And so you know, the technical term is variable bit stream encoding. So if you're accessing that video on a mobile device, you don't have to send down high definition resolution of video. You can send down the right bits for that particular screen. We also do offer, actually, and a number of people don't know this, peer-to-peer -peer directly built within the Flash player today. So if you're concerned about network bandwidth and you want to use peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, you have the able ability to do that. You know, again, our goal is to provide a great, rich, engaging environment for people, our customers, to build these next generation applications. And then you consider your customer set the, you know, I would say the largest two sets of customers are you know, media companies that are creating content mm -hmm. and marketers who are creating content. Right. So it's interesting to see how your platform, to put it that way, has become a place where really marketing and media are merging in a way in terms of trying to create engagement with an audience. Right. Um, and so where do you see that in about three, four, five years? I mean, can you imagine what the web looks and feels like then? While those large customers are certainly a big part of uh, where we derive our revenue today, we also derive a tremendous amount of revenue from what we call uh, creatives, aspiring creative professionals who don't do it for a living, but want the absolute best. You buy a $1,000 SLR camera, and you say, hey, how do I edit these images on it? And Photoshop's the gold standard. So 40% of our revenue today in the creative suite business comes from people like us who love the idea of creation. And so our goal really is people who, who wish to create and deliver content, we want to be the partner that they choose to create that. We've got a question over here. Uh, hello, my name is Jonas, and I have a question I think I share with quite uh, many of you concerned. Uh, I run a company called Jcut, which provides video editing in the web browser. And uh, by doing that, we're utilizing a flash, uh, flash front end. But right now, we see a lot of interesting things happening with the next generation of HDLM and how that can possibly compare with Flash as a standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your take on that? You know, our take is that innovation is great for the industry. And as it relates to Flash, uh, you're certainly right. Today, one can build applications completely using Flash in a browser that people would consider are competing with our standard desktop applications. We've built our own video editing tools today in browsers, whether it's 
Photoshop Elements, uh, Photoshop.com, uh, as well as Premiere, we allow people to do that. So we welcome the ability for people to use our environment to create rich applications built on the Flash platform. And our goal is to continue to innovate and make sure that we provide more value in that. But you're right, uh, I think people will use HTML as well to create some of these applications. I think the big difference today is that the fidelity that you get with Flash across all of these browsers is a non-trivial task that people have to solve themselves if they want to make it work in Chrome and Mozilla and IE and Safari. And I think that's part of the real value proposition of Flash today. Question over here. I should turn this Simpson out. Flash has become the preferred channel for delivering really rich interactive advertising. It also has become the preferred channel for delivering malvertising and kind of all the bad ways of people using data um, online because of its packaging, because the source is not accessible. Particularly in the context of the Onisher acquisition, what do you think is the role of Adobe to play um, in helping ensure the advertising ecosystem preserve richness and interactivity, but protects consumers? It's a great question, and you're right in that it's a, a tremendous balance. I think Adobe does have a leadership role to play, given the prevalence of Flash and rich advertising, and the fact that advertisers find that uh, ads in Flash are more compelling and provide greater value to both the publishers and the advertisers. And we will step up to that challenge. Uh, in terms of privacy, as the question was asked before, we will uh, continue to drive and make sure that we protect privacy for consumers while we provide the tools that enable publishers and advertisers to get their message across. And if there are things that Adobe can do in that, uh, in that regard, we're certainly open to uh, new suggestions, but we work with all advertising agencies as well as uh, the standards bodies to make sure that we're doing the right thing. We're running a little over, but we'll take this last question. Hi, uh, Josh Crandall with NetPop. I'm curious to know a little bit about your perspective on the global landscape of um, creativity and, and your uh, perceived opportunities, not only in the US, but in emerging internet uh, populations as well. Well, the great thing about the web, frankly, is that now everybody with a computer anywhere in the world uh, can create content and have the kind of brand presence that was previously reserved for people with a, a lot of dollars. And you know, we think that emerging markets represents a huge growth opportunity for Adobe because you are seeing a new category of creators and developers emerge in those markets. One challenge for Adobe today is that you know, when people ask us how we are doing in emerging markets, revenue uh, sucks today, but our market share is great because of uh, piracy, but it's, it's something that we look at and we say, you know what, we're going to invest in our brand. But I think it's just great. The amount of digital content that's being created is exploding, and a lot of the innovation on non-PC devices, I think, are going to come from those emerging markets. Thanks. Thank you. All right, unfortunately, we're already three minutes okay. over time, but right. thank you so much for yours. Thanks for having thank me. For okay, time. great. Thanks. Right.